Good afternoon, Cubes of the Cash. Gary B, the casual comic guy here. And today we have a mail call, some LCS pickups, and you, yes, you, get to decide if I'm a jerk or not. Based upon eBay seller feedback, and I'll show you what I sent them, what the messages were, the review that I gave, and um, what I got back. And you guys can help me decide if, if I was in the wrong or if they're in the wrong. But let's get into it. First thing I picked up is uh, when I did my LCS haul, I left a few books there by accident talking to the owner. So I just went and picked those up today. It was a Conan the Barbarian issue 25, 300 legacy issue, uh, blank sketch cover, which I'm going to have my buddy Ken Wheaton, going to commission him for a Conan sketch. Then, of course, uh, this other cover, which I failed to grab as well. I left them on the counter, but got them both here. They're both home. They're safe. They're going to go with the other covers I have. And then I bought um, an upgrade. So this is Chamber of Darkness 4, which precedes Conan the Barbarian 1 by a few months. And in this issue, there's a, a story in the back, Star of the Slayer, written by Roy Thomas, drawn by then only going by Barry Smith, Barry Windsor Smith, right? We all know what a fabulous artist he is. And what this issue was is the Conan prototype. All right, and when you if you read Star Slayer, and I'll do an in-depth review of that story in another video, but Roy Thomas could not hire John Basema mm -hmm. because he was too expensive, or Gil Kane because he was too expensive at the time to try out on a new title, Conan the Barbarian. So he had to go with an untested artist, and he chose. It was thinking about choosing Barry Smith, so this was his trial issue, and we all know that went super well. And uh, the rest is history. A good two-year run on Conan. So, really good issue. Really great Conan prototype. And now let's get into the eBay purchases. So we have Red Sonia number one. Red Sonia number two. Red Sonia and Claw, I should say. And uh, these were shipped really well. Super well protected, padded, cardboard, uh, just everything. These were protected. Really nice. As you can see, they're all near mint. And everything basically I received has been near mint, but um, these were shipped properly. Other things I received were not shipped properly, so they get damaged along the way. And this is one case in point, and you can already see the, uh, the bend right there from the shipping. Uh, the seller gave me a really great price on this. As you can see, this is one of my favorite issues, which you guys know, it's signed by Roy Thomas. The seller on this one gave me a really great price, but it wasn't shipped in a Gemini mailer. So these go through five or six different post offices. And so there's a bend there, which I got to go get pressed out. Uh, the guy seems nice enough, as did the guy in the next purchase, but he surprised me with his feedback. This guy has yet to respond to my feedback, so we'll see if I get called the jerk from him too. Maybe not. Maybe he'll take it constructively as it was meant and just use a Gemini because it could be a simple case of these guys just knowing not how to ship something properly. But if you purchase something, you expect the product as it was stated, purchased, delivered to you, right? And I'm sure when these guys purchase something, they expect the same thing. When they purchase it, they want it in the shape that they said it was in from whoever they're buying it. I don't think that's too much to ask when you're spending money. And so this one is a three issue 90 series called The Flame and the Fiend, part one and three. Uh, this, I cut it here to open it, but this is the Gemini Mailer, uh, not the Gemini Mailer, this is the not Gemini Mailer, shipped in a manila envelope, arrived in this condition. I checked how many post offices it went through, and it went through five different post offices. Uh, but the guy left me some baffling feedback, which I'll post over here. I'll let you guys decide if I'm the jerk or not. Um, but again, I just rebagged and boarded these. So they got new boards on them. The books are in pretty good shape. So I'm not upset with the books. I'll, uh, the bends, I'll be able to, at the bottom, I'll be able to get out a little bit. Luckily, there was no spine damage. But as you can see, had nothing to do with how the package arrived. The package was just destroyed. And I don't know how the books even survived in it. Um, so I left feedback and I'll put the feedback here and I said, uh, 
I gave the guy three four, uh, five star ratings and a four star rating. And I gave him neutral feedback. And I basically said, uh, great communication with seller. I wish everything was mailed in a Gemini mailer. The second package I received today that wasn't in a Gemini mailer. And I got feedback less than an hour later uh, saying, I gave this jerk a refund and asked me to revise my feedback, which I'm not going to do. My feedback was honest, but I'm going to post all that here and let you guys decide. It, the guy reached out when I first purchased these, said they're going to get mailed out. So he had great communication. I thought this was a really good transaction. And even with my feedback, which I left, which was mostly positive, I didn't see any issues with it. So the animosity and the hostility that came back was really quite a surprise to me. Uh, do I care? No. That stuff's not going to bother me. Uh, if you're a seller, you're responsible for the product that somebody paid that you're sending them. Now, he did take the initiative to give me a refund, which I did not ask for. But thank you for that. Uh, but... I didn't want a refund. I didn't ask for a refund. And the hostility with which my review was met was uh, quite shocking, especially since uh, when you look at this guy's picture, seems like a businessman. So just seeing someone dressed up business-like, you expect a certain amount of professionalism from someone in that kind of dress, which uh, the transaction started out that way. Unfortunately, it did not end up that way. Like I said, I'm going to post uh, all the feedback here and you guys can let me know what you think. But I was really surprised that so many people that are selling comics just don't know or don't care to ship them properly. If somebody makes a purchase from you, it's your obligation to make sure that purchase, purchase arrives to the person in the best shape it can. And that is not by putting it in a manila envelope with no cardboard or no Gemini mailer to protect the books, right? We all know that. We all sell comics. All of us on here that I know ship in Gemini mailers because it's almost impossible to hurt somebody's product if it's shipped properly. It can happen, yes, but it's almost impossible. So you guys let me know what you think. Let me know if I'm overworked. Let me know if I'm a jerk or if I did the right thing. But that's all for today, guys. Until next time, keep it casual.